Right guys, what is going on? Buster Barnes here, bringing you my review of Chelsea's free all draw against Southampton. Not the best result for the Blues, but I will be getting into all of the key moments of the match, plus giving you guys my player ratings and adding to my player of the season point scoring system as well. If you guys do enjoy these videos, please be sure to leave a like, comment down below what you guys thought of the match as well, and be sure to subscribe. We have hit 500 subscribers, guys, so I would like to say thank you for that. Um, maybe not the biggest milestone to some, but if some of you um, OGs know, we've been in the 400s for a while, so um, hopefully this is the first step to getting to the big 1,000 subscribers. Hope you guys do stick around. Apologies for not uploading yesterday. Just had a few issues that I had to resolve, but um, there will be a double upload today. Um, the first episode of my Season 2 of West Ham career modes will be up later today, so be sure to check into that as well. Had loads of fun filming Series 1, so Series 2 hopefully can be bigger and better. But with that said, let's get into the game. Okay, so this was the team that did start the match against Southampton. Fairly similar to the team that I predicted. However, we did see Mason Mount instead of hudson Adoy, and we did see Christensen instead of Fikayo Tomori. Two questionable decisions, maybe, to be honest. Uh, Mason Mount didn't have an awful game, so whilst I would have liked to have seen hudson Adoy, um, Mason Mount was fine, to be fair. I did find it weird that he was on the left as opposed to Pulisic. I found that a bit strange why that decision was made but I'm not too sure. Christensen at centre-back. Now, as you guys know, I do like to have my old occasional rant about Christensen. That probably won't change. I probably will get into it a little bit later. He definitely wasn't the worst of our defenders, um, or our back line, I should say, this game. But um, very questionable why he was played over someone like Tamori. Obviously, Thiago Silva was unavailable. But, um, yeah, still a team that should have beat Southampton, so you couldn't really complain too much but if we get into the game we actually kicked it off very well Timo Werner actually getting the ball in the back of the net but it's unfortunately being deemed offside we didn't really get a replay to see if it was definitely offside but it must have been if they didn't even really um, go into the whole VAR analysis but it wasn't too long before Timo Werner did get his first Premier League goal for us a pass through by Chilwell a crazy cheeky dummy by Werner to go through the Southampton defenders legs he takes on about three defenders before burying it in the bottom left corner and you can really see how much that meant to him it, I think he must have been really frustrated to be honest not to have got off the mark earlier in his first four games obviously he was played on the left which some may argue wasn't his best position but that was mainly due to injuries and things like that so I don't really blame Lampard for that but um, yeah, you could just see what it meant to him. Really nice individual goal from him as well. And that was us 1-0 up fairly early on. And it wasn't too long before Jorginho places a really nice ball over the top of the Southampton defence. Timo Werner sort of um, barges and sort of challenges the Southampton defender. It goes over, he heads it over the goalkeeper and then, or sorry, he um, lobs the goalkeeper with his feet before heading the ball into the back of the net. It was a really nice goal, guys, honestly. One of our best goals so far. Could have maybe been a contender for goal of the month, but obviously there was that Lanzini goal that happened um, yesterday. So um, may maybe not. Maybe he's a bit unlucky there not to receive anything for that. But at that point, we were 2 0 up. Now, I wouldn't say it was completely comfortable. Our defence did look shaky at times. There was something, there was like a. I don't know, there was just a feeling of like not that much confidence in the back. And I'm not sure if it was because Kepper was playing. I think that our back line really suffers when um, he's playing now. You can just see they have no confidence in him. But um, we were still 2-0 up, but it wasn't long until Southampton did score just before half-time um, to go to the score being 2-1. It was Danny Ings who went around Kepper and scored. Now, I can't blame Kepper for this. Obviously, it was Kai Havertz who maybe was a bit too casual on the ball, did get tackled and intercepted. Southampton now, you can also argue that um, no one else made the interception. They still had to go few through a fair few of Chelsea bodies to get to Kepa, and um, I think a lot of players were at fault here, but obviously Havertz did lose the ball. Kepa couldn't really have done much, so um, yeah, when you're one on one with Ings, it's usually going to end in a Danny Ings goal. So um, yeah, unfortunately, Southampton went. 2-1 up. It wasn't long as well um, into the second half now that they actually equalised to go 2 all. And this goal was absolutely comical, guys. It was a terrible goal to concede. The ball is hit over the top pretty much out of nothing. Zuma does not deal with it very well. He goes for a pass back to Kepa, but there's no power on it. Kepa, for some reason, like runs 
to the ball go sliding in when I'm pretty sure he could have just cleared it. Like if you look at the space between the ball and um, the, and I believe it was Adams and um, Kepper as well, there was enough space in my opinion for Kepper to just boot the ball out of the pitch, but he didn't. And I think this is really just showing um, how his lack of confidence really is just like not great at the moment. Um, he slides in, but he pulls out of the slide for some reason. Don't know if he was worried about giving away a red card, but. He wouldn't have because the ball did touch him, so that was very strange. The ball hits the post, I believe. Um, Kepa goes sliding in, um, which he didn't need to do. He could have just picked up the ball. It was it was very bad from him, just a keeper really lacking confidence. Terrible goal to concede, mainly him and Zuma, and you've got to you know, sort of rag on Zuma a bit, even though you guys know how much um, I love Zuma, and I still think he's our best centre-back. Some people jumping on him saying that, hmm, I'm not sure if he should be starting anymore. That is completely ridiculous. I don't know what you're on about. He hasn't had a bad game in absolutely ages. So, um, yeah, but it wasn't great from him walking back to a point. Um, I just think he has no confidence in Kepa at all, but that shouldn't have stopped him from, you know, trying to get back quickly. Um, yeah, just a completely comical goal, and I believe it was Adams that did stick it in the back of the net. Not quick, not um, too long after that, though, we actually do score um, to go 3-2 up. It was actually a really nice play. Werner to Pulisic, and Pulisic actually did have a very good game. Obviously not the most amazing game. It's his first game back, but that pass from him through to Werner was absolutely immaculate, in my opinion. He dribbled past a few Southampton players as well. Werner squares it unselfishly over to Havertz, who gets his first Premier League goal for Chelsea as well. Just really nice. Um, really, um, Havertz really showing what a quality player he is. He's just so like casual and smooth with the ball. Maybe, I think in the future, there may be games where it comes across as a bit lazy, but we've seen his work pay off the ball. He does have it, so um, I do hope that doesn't happen. But we were 3-2 up, and at that point, we were hoping that we did have the game sealed. However, the tactics kind of changed a bit, and we sort of sat back a bit more now. Obviously, Southampton has scored two goals, so you can't blame them that much, but Reese James came on, and I didn't blame it for happening, because Southampton were attacking a lot down Aspie's side, so you did need a bit of security for him, but the way we just sort of sat back, instead of pressing and trying to continue to attack up the pitch, really just invited a lot of pressure from Southampton, and when our back line was really not looking that confident at all, inviting pressure, in my opinion, really isn't the way to go. Um, we do give away a, free, a silly free kick, I believe it was Reese James, they cross it in, Zuma heads it out, um, full straight to, I believe it was Walcott, Walcott shoots, um, it takes a deflection of Vestergaard who does head it into the back of the net and that was free all and that was how the game did end. Um, third goal, I can't really blame anyone, some people are blaming Zuma um, because he obviously headed it to Walcott but at the end of the day he needed to get his head on it, he needed to clear it, um, I think it was just more unfortunate of anything else that um, he hit it to Walcott and if anything a player should have been out quicker to pressure Walcott anyway so and um, whilst I think for the second goal it was clearly Zuma and Kepa's fault I think the first goal and um, I guess it was more Havertz's fault but the third goal I think was just very unfortunate it was in the dying embers of the game and it was free all very disappointing to go 2-0 up and to then draw free all um, two free all results so far so you can't say Chelsea aren't an exciting team to watch but um, definitely very tense one if you are in fact a Chelsea fan, but um, yeah, not great, we really need to improve on this, we cannot be drawing these games, I mean, to be fair, we did lose this fixture last season against Southampton, so I guess you can say we technically improved um, a bit, but um, still, with the signings we've brought in, with the players we have, and um, with the way the players are, you know, a bit more experienced now, um, we just shouldn't have lost this game, but I will be getting in to my player and um, ratings, so let's get right into that and see what I thought of the general squad performance. Okay, so getting into goal, guys, we have Kepa, obviously. Now, I don't blame Lampard for starting Kepa because, as you guys know, in my prediction video, I did start Kepa. I do think he deserved a chance to, you know, prove himself once Edouard Mendy was injured. But now I just think that's it. I don't really want to see Kepa in goal for us again. He just has no confidence. He's a complete shambles now. And um, I'll get a bit more onto him in a bit when I talk about someone else. But um, it wasn't great for him. He did make a few saves. In a way, he's kind of not performed as badly as he did last season. But that's not saying anything at all. He's still pretty terrible. Second goal, just inexcusable. He should have cleared it. He should have picked up the ball when he came sliding in as well. Um, I wouldn't say he was the only person at fault for that goal. But yeah, it was not good from him. I'm giving him a 4.5 out of 10. Solely because in the first half, I think he did do some decent saves. And actually, like, he did collect a cross or two. So... 4.5, maybe a bit generous, maybe should be like a 4, but um, these ratings, guys, by the way, I made straight after the match, so I will talk about another one a bit later that I think should 
probably change. Getting into the back four, though, I'm going to give three ratings straight away. Aspilicueta, Christensen, and Zuma all getting a 5.5 now. I do think that Zuma probably should get a 5 because I didn't actually notice until watching it back that in the second goal he was walking back home to the ball and it was obviously all scrambling around the box so I don't think that was great at all so I would give him a 5. The reason why I wouldn't go lower for him is because I do think that he won absolutely loads of aerials. I think it was 9 or 10 aerials he won and um, he did still look like a big presence at the back and did make some very good last and did make one or two really good last ditch tackles as well so I wouldn't say he was awful. I do think the de defensive collection as a whole was just pretty bad so and um, that's why I'm going to give him a 5 even though it says 5.5 on the um, screen um, as P 5.5 conceded 3 goals I didn't really see much from him to be honest I do think that maybe he could have done better in the attacking phase a little bit as well maybe wasted some chances um, wasn't necessarily great from him obviously Reese James had to come on later in the half because Aspie couldn't really deal with the Southampton pressure Christensen now, like I said at the start, I do rant about Christensen, going to continue that. Now, did Christensen have an awful performance yesterday? Probably not. Was he our worst defensive player? No, he wasn't. However, this is my stress, and this is why I'm going to, you know, hit a bit of Lampard here for selecting Christensen. Christensen and Zuma doesn't work as a partnership. It just absolutely doesn't. We've seen that last season. They just don't work. There's no communication or chemistry between them at all. Now... Some people I did see say, like, oh, Christian needs a run of games with someone, you know, he needs to get, he needs a run of games with Thiago Silva. Number one, a, a Thiago Silva Christensen partnership sounds ridiculous. They would just probably get completely bullied by some of the bigger teams because Christensen, whilst his aerial rate I've seen is actually decent, I think really he just performs better against smaller players. I think you put him up against a Premier League player, not very good at all. And also, when you look at Zuma and Christensen, Christensen hasn't gelled with any of our centre-backs. He just can't form a partnership with anyone. Zuma, on the other hand, performed well with Thiago Silva, bearing in mind it was one game. Um, performs well with Tamori, performs decently with Rudiger, and this is why, controversially, I actually think Rudiger is a better centre-back than Christensen, at least for our team, because at least Rudiger does gel and have some sort of partnership with our players, um, and is a bit more of a personality as well. But... Um, yeah, I think that Christian just doesn't add anything. Like, honestly, guys, tell me in the comments below what Christensen adds to this team. He's not powerful. He's not a leader. Um, he doesn't add anything going forward. Can't score a header. He also doesn't progress the ball. Zuma, Tamori, Rudiger, Thiago Silva, they're all pinging balls out. And you might argue that they're not as great passers as Christensen. But Christensen doesn't progress the ball. He's just a safe sideways pass player. Um, and he doesn't do anything, guys. He's just... I want him to succeed as an academy player... But he just doesn't do anything. And whilst, when I'm going to talk about him and Kepa, do I think that they're both done with football? No. Do I think they could both become great in their positions? Yeah, I do. But do I think they could become great in their positions at Chelsea? No, no. I don't think they, they can. I think Christensen and Kepa could become great if they went to the Spanish League or the Italian League or something. But in the Premier League, they're just not Premier League players. Their mentalities are completely shambolic. Um, Kepa especially, I think he's just done as a Chelsea player. I don't think he's ever going to regain his confidence. You can see the players don't have confidence in him at all, which, I mean, can't be great for him. Um, and I do feel bad for Kepa. I mean, it must not be a great position for him to be in. I'm sure he's getting abused by, you know, awful fans online and stuff like that. I think it's just best for him and for the club, for everyone, if he does not play for Chelsea again, to be honest. Um, I am of that nature but um yeah so that's my words on Christensen and Kepa I just don't really want to see either of them in the team to be honest unless it's like a FA Cup game against Scunthorpe or something and I guess you can throw them in but um yeah just not for me to be honest getting on to our final defender Chilwell gonna give a six he did get an assist and was showing some good stuff going forwards but again we conceded three goals so um, you've got to look at the whole defensive collective when that does happen going into the defensive pivot I'm actually only going to give Kante a six because Whilst I think he did decent defensive work, we obviously conceded three. But also, I do think he made a few mistakes going forward. His passes maybe a bit too much power on them. He did lose the ball a few times, so I didn't think it was great from him. Jorginho, on the other hand, I'm going to give a seven because he did get an assist. And also, I do think that in the attacking phase, he did control play very well. Again, defensively, he's not the strongest, but I do think that he is needed when he's in the pivot with either Kante or Kovacic, just for that leadership and communication. But, um, yeah, I think he deserved a 7, but, again, just a whole team performance not great defensively. Kai Havertz next, I'm also going to give a 7, 
Got a goal which looked like it might have been the winner but unfortunately wasn't. Did some good stuff. He did have the error leading to the first goal but again it did go through a bunch of other players as well so you can't solely blame him for that. Um, and yeah, he did score as well. And I thought he did some really nice play, especially in the first half. First half, we were flowing crazy, guys. We looked amazing going forward in the first half. But um, unfortunately, um, we just couldn't um, work well defensively. Um, but yeah, Havertz, I think, gets a 7. Mason Mount, I'm going to give a 6. I actually thought it was an okay performance. Now, I've seen people online say, you know, why was he starting on the wing? And Lampard just forces him into the team. I agree. I do think Lampard forces him into the team. And maybe you could argue that, oh, it's because he leads the press, stuff like that. Well, I mean, other other players press as well. And also, against Crystal Palace, we won 4-0 and Mount didn't play. So I don't necessarily think that's a fair observation. However, I do understand people moaning about Mount on the wing. However, I don't think that was necessarily a big factor in this game. Because he did play good going forward. And also, we scored three goals. So you can't really have too much of a go at Mount, to be honest. Um, and also defensively, none of the other wingers in our team are going to be as good defensively as him either, so I don't think Mount was an issue this game, but I can see why people have their gripes about him playing on the wing. I think if we play Mount, it has to be a 4-3-3, but I understand why we're not playing that at the moment, because I don't think Lampard trusts any of our players to be that lone defensive midfielder, hence why he wants Declan Rice, I believe. Um, going on to Christian Pulisic, going to give a 6.5, his first start back in the Chelsea shirt this season. And really good going forward, was getting in the box, um, was making things happen, was crucial for our third goal as well. Really nice dribble leading to the pass through to Werner. Um, I think he was probably the most crucial element of that goal, to be honest. So um, very, very good from him. Um, but I am going to give him a 6.5. Didn't get a goal or an assist or anything. I thought it was good from him, though. Um, I would say he was one of the better performers of the team. And um, going finally into Werner, our best player of the game, scored two goals and got an assist. His two goals, pretty much fair kind of individual goals, though there was a great um, assist by Jorginho. Um, just amazing. He looked on fire and electric. Him at striker just looked absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, so an 8.5 for him, honestly. I thought it was great. Um, yeah, just absolutely awesome work from him. Always trying to look to make things happen, dotting around everywhere. Um, trying to score more goals. You can see the passion as well. Probably could have scored maybe um, two more as well. And um, you can just see the passion that he has. So that was nice from him. On the bench, Ziyech, Reese James and Tammy Abraham all came on. All going to get sixes because they couldn't really do much. Maybe I could argue Ziyech gets a 5.5 because not to be harsh. And obviously it is his first minutes in the Prem. Um, he did lose the ball a few times. So it didn't look awesome. But um, it is also kind of to be expected to be honest, and we still shouldn't have, you know, drawn the game anyway, even if he did come on. It was just a really big um, defensive calamity as a whole, to be honest. So they all get sixes. Um, and yeah, those are going to be my player ratings. Let me know what you guys would rate the players down in the comments below. If I get on to my player of the season point scoring system, I'm actually going to give two players one point and one player the three points as well. I think we all know who that player is going to be. The two one-point players are going to be Jorginho and Havertz, getting an assist and a goal um, retrospectively from them. Um, I thought they were both playing quite well. I think going forward, they really helped control the game. Jorginho made some decent interceptions as well. So I think they both get the one point. I don't think either one of them stood out as that much better than the other. And I don't think that they deserve necessarily the two points because I wouldn't say they either had flawless games either. Obviously, Kai Havertz losing the ball for the um, goal. Jorginho maybe could have done a bit better defensively as well. So both of them are going to get the one point. Werner, however, is definitely getting the three points. Two goals and assists. Not much more to say. Was definitely our best player on the night. If you guys look at the screen as well, you can now see how those points are tallying up. Werner in the lead with the eight points, I believe it is. So fairly in the lead from him over everyone else, but still a really long season to go. We can see more names being added to this list as the games do go on. But I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, comment your thoughts down below and subscribe. Trying to get on our way to a thousand subscribers now. We've passed that 500 mark. We'll still be a while, but um, hopefully we can eventually get there. Like I said, I am going to do a double upload today, so stay tuned for um, Season 2, Episode 1 of my West Ham career mode. It's always great fun, guys, so um, I do recommend that you stay tuned for that. Hope you guys do have a nice day. I'll be hitting you with my Chelsea versus Sevilla preview tomorrow as well, so stay tuned for that. Hope you guys did enjoy, and I'll see you next time.